I saw going on at the office besides uh, the most surviving Barstool. I think it's going to be the best product that we've ever put out of Barstool. And they're making each other cry. There are going to be friendships completely decimated by the show. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, mama. Everybody, everybody who was worried that this show was going to peak too early, every episode keeps on building. It's me and Feidelberg here for the episode three after show. We are waiting on uh, our special guest for the night, uh, Rob Sesternino from Rob Has a Podcast. He's an ex Survivor player and the authority when it comes to Survivor podcasts. So we're getting- I don't think so anymore. I don't well, think so anymore. There's a new fucking Hall of Famer in town. It is crazy. I was was just watching with Bree, Kelly, and Bria, and everyone just kept going, God damn, Tommy's good at this. I I know. I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination. Tommy's good at it. And and sometimes I just don't – I don't know why these girls can't stop themselves from talking. (laughs) Stop talking. Every night – John, every night I sit up there and I just quietly sit I just sit on the stump and I just say like, so what do you guys think? And they just tell everything. It's crazy. <laughs> Dude, but here, a little a little more inside baseball here. Tommy, so I guess when this all first started happening, I, I think Tommy told, us, told me this today, maybe yesterday. Nope, today. And and Tommy goes, people asked him, they said, hey, you know, should I watch some a season of Survivor and see what it's like? Tommy told everyone, nah, it's not really good. I know. I know. Don't worry about it. He just knows everything he does is so calculated and so smart. And he's just, I hate giving Tommy credit. He's legitimately great at this. No, he is. He's been doing, he he said in his interview, since I was four years old, four years old, he wanted to do this. And, you know, he's been planning his whole life. And now he's doing it against people who have not, who don't even watch the show. So they are at a huge disadvantage. I believe Rob is here now. We can bring him in uh, and and ask his opinion. I would imagine as like a survivor expert, Rob, thank you for joining us. Rob yeah. is with us. Uh, he's got the podcast. Rob has a podcast talking about Survivor and Big Brother, all the other reality shows, all the other contestants. Uh, and, and Tommy linked me up with him. So, I mean, is this – Tommy's great at the game? Or is this rookie, he's playing against rookie competition who can't stop themselves? So first off, thank you all so much for feeding us Survivor fans here in this long drought. Something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that Tommy, that I, I think he should have got caught. He should have got caught that, uh, that he, I think, got the benefit of playing against rookies. That mm-hmm. it was impressive ultimately what he did. But I think experienced players suss out what he tried to do. But so, isn't it experience to tell them to not figure out what he's doing? Well, like, it's he's also I, I also think it's a level of experience to be like, I know these guys are rookies. I don't have to play this idol. I think I've got their trust when they absolutely fucking shouldn't trust me. But uh, you know, it part of me feels like those girls, it was silly, but also it's like he got it to happen, so you gotta tip your cap and give him credit. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a a pretty common survivor thing. If somebody takes the idol out and is like, uh, hey, hey, see this? See this idol? I I got it. I got it tonight. So you can't vote me out. That's usually like 95% of the time, like the person is not going to actually play it if they're showing you and talking about it at the the tribal council. So I felt like that was the tell that he wasn't going to do it. And I felt like that either they could have faked him out and told him that they were all going to go. They were all going to go for Zot and then really vote for him him or that the there were they could have split the vote they could have put three votes on za and three votes on tommy force him to play the idol worst case scenario za still goes home you know that was kind of so so a little inside barstool here um i i was kind of i wish they had explained more and just given them more rules up front the creators were survivor fans they knew everything about it i think they just threw them to the fire and said it's it's totally on them to learn everything about the game I think we should have given them a little more, you know, here's what an idol is. Here's how it works. Um, like, I actually they, have a question about that. Could Donnie have just stolen that from Tommy? No, that's not allowed, right? That's not allowed. Allowed. That wouldn't be allowed on Real Survivor. I don't know if yeah. uh, no, Surviving I, Barstool, if there are different rules. Yeah, no. But that I, does I, happen I, a lot where people go through the bag. Said, um, we had said that that wouldn't – you can't do that either. Um, so – 
Like, not only did they not know what it was, not know when you play it, but they're not thinking about, like, and neither was I, thinking about, like, the mathematics of it, like you just did. And a couple of the producers and the behind-the-scenes people said exactly what you said. Either either way, Tommy's, like, fucked, and you're not. So just save yourself by either forcing him to do it, you know what I mean? So, like, one way or another, you could have banked on, well, Tommy's got to go, which, A, is a good thing because he's a strong player, and, B, you know you're saving yourself mathematically. Uh, they just don't view Tommy the same way as the viewer. Is there something that happens in like survivor mentality where like coming into it, everyone was like, fuck Tommy smokes. And then you get there and you play games and you get to know them. And maybe you, you, you respect them a little more. I wonder now did is Tommy now, uh, unlikable to the point where he can't win so now like now he's there i i wonder if people are looking at him like uh kelly maybe and maybe saying like hey if i sit next to tommy after he just was an ass in front of everybody for no reason after the vote i wonder if he's now become so unlikable that you want to go to the end with tommy mm, this is the next level like he's come incredibly likable like i, I oh to I the viewer to us and now today I was get going, this guy's fucking good. He's yeah. Good well, I think something happens when you watch the, sh the, the show and I'm sure when you're involved in it, where like a level of respect comes about where you're like, it's like anything else. You know, you watch, you know, Pedro pitch against the Yankees and they're, they're like, ah, oh, fuck this guy. He's good. You know, you hate LeBron, but he's just good. When there's a good player at a game, I think you start to, you know, just respect the actual craft of it rather than be like, Tommy, he's got, you know, fucking swollen lips and rashes on his fingers because he's such a fucking worm, but you just start to like him. I think we yeah. lost fights. Tommy. What were, what you were you I was going to say, Tommy looks worse than any Survivor member of all time. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy's done nothing but sleep in a New York City pretty nice office yes. for three mm -hmm. days, and he looks worse than anyone on Survivor has ever looked. Rob, how... That, that was the one thing Tommy did say. He was like, I'm confident in my mental abilities this week so far, but, you know, I can't, I can't hang out in an office building. The, the island would kick my ass. How bad really is that being, you know, in, in the wilderness like that? Yeah, uh, being in an office is a lot better. Uh, he says he has a sinus infection, so, uh, like, uh, you know, hopefully he'll be able to pull through. But, yeah, the, the island is rough. Being you, You'd much rather be in the office building. Were you, uh, are you like an outdoors type? Like, were you no. ready for that when you went on? No, well. no, uh, I'm from Long Island. No, <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's crazy to me. I feel like if you're not like somewhat into the wilderness, that shit's going to, how long, how, how long if you, if you last, how long are you on there? 38 days. Holy fuck, man. That's crazy. It was literally like day three and Tommy's lips are blowing up. Mm -hmm. it's crazy. Tommy, has, somehow he got a faux hawk. Like uh, Tommy, Tommy slept in an office for three days and somehow has a faux hawk now. Uh, he looks like me in the fucking 2006 prom. It was <laughs> <laughs> it's stressful. What 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 did you make of uh, that that end there? Um, Brianna, you know, kind of saw the Matrix for a second there. She had the blueprint. She wanted to double cross him. Would have been the smart move. Couldn't rally enough support for yeah. it. What do you think? I think that she's in a really good spot where now she came across as like a uh, very steady, like uh, she really ha was very poised after all that. And she was really like throwing him under the bus. Hey, we all, Tommy, we all trusted you. I don't know why mm -hmm. you went against the Alliance. And I think that he was a little rattled after the whole thing. I think that she's in a, a really good spot to uh, decide uh, which way they're going to go. And really, um, now it's going to be who can pick up Tommy? Is it going to be the the two women? Are they going to be able to pick him up? Or is it going to be uh, Donnie and Nick? Do, do you think uh, so? So like something like that happens. Brianna says, hey, let's do this. Kelly says, no, 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 let's stick with it. Turns out to be the absolute wrong play. Does now Brianna ha like have a lot of power kind of psychologically in that spot where it's like, you should have listened to me next time we're going with my thoughts. It really depends on what kind of person uh, Brianna is. If she's going to hold a grudge against uh, Kelly being like, I told you so, or if then Kelly is going to maybe next time l listen to her a little bit more. But it really comes down to the interpersonal dynamic between those two. Which, John, I don't think we know enough about Brianna yet. I think we know enough about Kelly to know how she's going to handle that situation. I don't think she's going to get bullied around by anybody, right or wrong. I don't think she's going to get bullied around by anybody. But also, like... They seem okay now, right? I we I, I 
intentionally re- removed myself from all of this. So I don't know anything that happens, mm-hmm. but they seem okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, okay <laughs> Tommy yeah. did definitely stack the deck here, putting Rob on this show. No. He was like, it would be great to get him on. We would get into the survivor circles. You got to do it. You got to do it. He was just looking to stack the deck and get as much praise as he could get. Look, he did the, a great job. He's the MVP of the episode, but I, I think that more experienced Survivor players would have caught him. I, that I thought he had some some tells that other Survivor players would have picked up on. Yeah, so, so what you're saying is that Tommy looks great in Little League, but as a professional baseball player yourself, you'd say, I yeah. could have done I mean, call him up to the majors. <laughs> I mean, he last fucking six hours in the wilderness, man. But mm-hmm. when, we, when we took away his bag, he said, uh, guys, I have my medication in there. And I was kind of like, oh, fuck, like, what is it? And he was like, I have heartburn. I was like, that's not medication, Tommy. You have Tums in your bag. That doesn't count. <laughs> um, so, what, like, some of those interactions, like, when you see Tommy and Donnie in the room together, and Donnie's like, I totally played it cool. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've watched some of, like, the most deceitful scumbags on, yeah. on, on the planet. Did the, did these guys look like you know rookies trying to hide secrets, or did some of them play it well? Yeah, that was that was really great. Uh, Donnie was uh, really incredible in that scene. You know, he that uh, he has the conversation with Tommy, and Tommy's asking about the idol. How'd you hear about it? He says uh, the the women the women told me. Uh, he talks about the the limp handshake also, which <laughs> was like another great thing. I, I think that's just a millennial thing. Uh, you, you think like, oh, is he is he tricking me? No, he was no, he, he, he really wanted to vote out Zah. So <laughs> you got to be careful with that stuff. But yeah, that was really great. This was the best episode, I felt like, that this mm-hmm. one really had like the most gameplay in it in terms of everybody trying to figure out like where the idol was and everything that was going to go into the vote. There's a lot more to come, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, it gets even better. Uh, I do think uh, Portnoy put out his podcast right before this episode that day. I do think that hurt Za. A lot of people were persuaded by Dave. You know, he is, he's the most likable. He can do all these weird challenges. He can eat things. He's whatever. Uh, I, I do think that kind of put a bullseye on his back. Yeah. At one point, Zah, I believe was like, I'm, I'm playing him. Cause I told them all, I don't care so that they'll vote for me. But I don't, but I do really care. I was like, I don't think that's going to work the way you want it to Zah, but okay, man, whatever. <laughs> Maybe you're smarter than I am. But I think a little bit of uh outside forces might have might have influenced this episode whereas uh you know 38 days when you're secluded on an island there's nothing right yeah his reputation is that he's the likable guy everybody's gonna vote for him in the end he needed to come in and be like a huge a-hole to everybody like he should he should have come in and then played against type where he should have been like cursing everybody out and waking everybody up in the middle of the night with pots and pans and then be like boy i really can't stand za i would hate him and then they would want to keep him around because that he was too likable Right. I mean, he, he he played it there at the end. He had his outburst, but I think it was a little too little too late. How often does the the nice guy versus the, the snake, who, who usually gets farthest? It uh, really uh, comes down to a, a lot of different things. You know, it's towards the end of the game. And because this started with eight people, it's like we're at the end of the game now. So right. it's like people are looking at people to to get to the end where there's, there's a, like a, a point where it flips around on Survivor where you start thinking about like, well, who's the biggest jerk that I want to sit next to at the end of the game so that people will vote for me against them. Right. That's a very cool thing that they did that they instituted with the jury where at the last second, it's like, no, nah, let's keep Tommy around. I think mm-hmm. that's what's going on here. How 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 does my man Nick stack up to uh, ex Survivor players? And have there been has there ever been a Survivor player as funny as Nick Tarani? I would have to venture to guess no. Yeah, Nick had the all time moment in uh, the episode last night where he called his mom to uh, go to the bathroom. But ne- then in this episode, okay, so we got the like the opening part where he calls his mom and says, "Okay, say this." So now. Did was the stunt stunt from last night? Was that a plant? Was that a re, was that a reveal that he does this before every tribal council, or was it that that was such a hit? He's like, I got to run with this now. Rob, Rob, Nick does this every day of his life. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a, this is not a That's survivor. What he said he'll yeah. call his mom, he'll call his friends. He does this all the goddamn time. <laughs> yeah, I actually had no idea. Um, I've never seen the sausage made with one of those, John. Like I, I had not seen him at the bar tipping his mom off. So when we were up there that next day, I was like, I just want more of his mom. So I was like, why don't you call your mom? Like I just, I was throwing that out there no matter what was happening. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get him to bring that phone out there. Had no idea that he had already prepped it. I thought she was just brilliant. 
Oh, you thought she could just she could just sense her son? And no, she's like, I know what he wants me to say here. No, I thought it was always like, hey, might call you, uh, like tonight. I didn't think it was like it's gonna be about the glasses. I thought she <laughs> could like you know run with it a little bit. But uh, either way, cowboy, he was so upset with that. He was just devastated that he wasn't getting his sunglasses back. It was an unbelievable. Does anybody does anybody get on Survivor and just kind of fuck around and have fun with it, or is everybody usually pretty focused? Uh, not as much as you would think, because that they really want to know like uh, what you're doing. Like you go through casting, so if you want to do something like you know uh, crazy like that, it's almost like you have to like keep production in on it from mm-hmm. the beginning because they're yeah. not going to necessarily send you out there as one person and then you're ending up to do a completely different thing. So it, it's rare when we get stuff like that what do you think about this whole production you think there's like a market for this that's a little more you know a little obviously powered yeah uh, I, I think it's been really incredible. I've been really impressed with uh, just the production value. Like, I really didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out when I heard that this was coming up. But I mean, this is, you know, uh, j- just as good as like any of these other uh, different like uh, like off brand survivors that come out. Like the coverage is uh, amazing. And uh, I've been really impressed. It's very what serious. What the thing is that it is like it's shocking because we I, I've always I'm not a humongous reality guy. I don't. You know, I, I don't hate it, but it's just not something I consume a ton of. And I've always thought, I'm like, well, it's got to be a lot of fake. It's got to be a lot of plants. And we put them in a room for six hours. And they were just right away like, fuck that person, hate that person, want to kill that person. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was so fast to happen that it was it was stunning how easy it is. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, I, I, I think the human nature of it, whether you're in an office or out in the woods, it, it seems to be that people are just kind of assholes. It's pretty great. But um, listen. Is there, is there better, like, are you, so were you into reality before you were on the show? Or were you, so, like, I've gotten into it now. I mean, I'm yeah. subscribing to Rob Has a Podcast. I'm watching right. Survivor. I'm watching Big Brother. Anything with a vote, I am fucking in on now. Yeah. So I played in the very early days of Survivor that I played in Survivor 6 and now they're at Survivor 40. So there, uh, I was a huge fan of it, but then it was only like a year or two when I actually went and played. Oh, wow. So you really didn't. I mean, that was that's early on. Then, I huh? got in on the ground floor. Yeah. yeah. And then and then when did you start the podcast? I started the podcast in 2010. OK, so there's like a little bit of a, you know, there's like, a, little, a little bit of a gap. Yeah, right. Right. People just telling you, like, you're great at this stuff. You love talking about it. You might as well put it on, on uh, out there for the people. It was really, I had nothing else to do. Uh, I was, uh, had no job and I said, okay, well, I guess I should make a podcast about survivor. Well, I I can understand why it works though, because I got one little taste of it and I am like, I want give me behind the scenes. Give me extra footage. Give me more. Let's do it. You know, we were supposed to do an after show on the last night. I was like, fuck it. Let's do it every night. I want to talk about it. So I can only imagine how it is for the, you know, for millions of people. So, uh, it makes total sense to me. You got a new fan over here, bro. Uh, Oh, thanks Casey. Man, man. So uh, we'll see what's in store tomorrow. Um, Glenny Balls will join us on the after show. It's hard. I mean, it's hard for me to say tonight was dramatic, but I think we're going to take it up another notch. I think it gets even more dramatic. If, if you like the gameplay tonight, I think the gameplay tomorrow is even better. So tune in tomorrow. Same thing as always, 7 o'clock uh, on Wednesday night tomorrow. And then Thursday is our big finale. So uh, tune in both nights and immediate, uh, immediately afterwards is the NAFTA show. Rob, we appreciate it, man. Everybody go subscribe to Rob Has a Podcast covering uh, all sorts of reality shows, including Survivor. And uh, appreciate you, appreciate you, you know, stooping down to 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 our level. And, you know, yeah, look again. Thank you for scratching that Survivor itch for so many of us. So I appreciate you know, eight people, four or five episodes, but you know, we'll give you what we can. All right. Yeah, this was a nice surprise. Have a good one, dude. We'll talk to you soon. And we'll see everybody tomorrow night, same time, same place. Thank you so much, Rob. Listen, if you made it this far into the video, which is far, like no one ever does that on the internet. Like it's the end. You made it to the end the of the video. The full fucking video you, you watched did. the whole thing. So if you liked it and you watched the whole thing, why don't you subscribe? It means you like us. Click the subscribe button because if you don't, I'm going to fucking murder John. And I'm going to like it. I'll kill him with my bare fucking hands. Yeah. And if you weren't sold on this video, there's plenty more. Watch what's next up, and then subscribe. But just subscribe, so I don't have to fucking kill him. Well, I don't know. Do what you want, but subscribe. Probably.